All right, I am here once again, the Alabama legend making a comeback. This is your third time on the show, ain't it, Jeff? Yes, and uh, happen to have his very good friend and very good golfer, Mr. Will Wilcox. Thank you, fellas. Yeah, it's going to be a absolutely. lot of fun. Yes, thank you. You know, I've been asking a lot of people lately um, just to get, like I had, I don't know if you guys know Stuart Morgan. He, uh, Stuart's a top 100 international coach. And he was he ran the IJGA here for a number of years, uh, but he 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 got into learning and how people can prep instead of just beating balls and all that stuff. And Ian Highfield wrote game like training a number of years ago, and he runs a core academy up in Boston now. But they're both from the UK originally. Um, but I asked them because their perspective is from a European perspective, because that's where they're both from. And what I want to ask you guys, and what I've been asking a lot of people lately, is what's your what's your idea, your thoughts on that Live Golf Tour? Good, bad, indifferent. What What do you think about it? I think it? if you've already established yourself and, you know, you can ride off into the sunset on some Saudi money, it's not like – I mean, I know they're – you know, it's a country that's uh, very controversial, but, I mean, a guy like – you know, you're you're from Europe and you've made $30 million, you know. I mean, what are the odds you're going to make another 30. 100 or 30, whatever, yeah. you know. I'd, I'd say, I mean, how you turn it down, you know. 16 events in one year, I mean, you know. You turn that down. For that and the shotgun. Right. They're, yeah, and they're, they're doing, I think they're doing a shotgun. Right, they're doing shotgun starts. So everyone's starting at the same time, so you're four and a half hours Travis, at least. Call Travis, man. In that case, they start on number 12. <laughs> you start on 12. <laughs> and, and maybe Travis can give them some advice and they get one throw per round, too. Yeah. I mean, last place is 120K. I mean, there's going to be some obscure, you know, guy from whatever making – 20 million and i think people are going to cut and run and go to it you know what i mean when you got some european tour guy that keeps his car barely and then he goes over there and finishes third and gets a couple million you know what i mean it's i just think i money just think the money is going to speak yeah it does money makes what well, i mean you know and things. that seems to be the general consensus is more of the european people i talk to don't seem so hell-bent against it and he, he even i i would say the the people in the states i talk to most aren't against it. I mean, they're kind of anxious to see what it is, but it seems like there's a few media personalities. I, I'm not going to name any names you don't have uh, unless to. you guys want to talk. About, right. I think everyone knows who we're talking about. Just seem to be so hell bent against it for their own reason. They make the argument. I'm not here to say they're right or wrong. I'm just saying that there's varying groups. Uh, I'm, I'm as a golf fan, kind of interested to see what they're going to do. I mean, are they, uh, are these how, purses really going to be that big? 20 million. I think they're 20 million. And I think 20 million. Five. Yeah, I mean, it, 150 thousand last place. In in that sense, it is crazy not to do it because you got to have money to survive. Hell, you got to have money to pay for five dollar gas. Now they're going on. <laughs> that, wait a minute. Sorry. That's that, a lot of tanks of gas. Last place. Yeah, yeah. yeah you won't have. <laughs> what well, you know? It, next it, tournament. The um the, the 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 question in my mind is if if most of the guys are going there for the money. And it's not like the money on the PGA Tour is really bad, but what they don't have, and it would take them a long time to build, and that's the question in my mind, will they last long enough to build it? I mean, you guys both know. Will, you know better than Jeff and I, but the, the, the Tour has so much history. And, you, you like, you take Colonial this week. Like, that thing's been around for, what, 60 years? Yeah, it was a, and, I, I, that playing you know, the tournament, you just, you just feel like you're hanging out with, you know, Hogan. Ghost of Ben Hogan. So, so I mean, the, 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 there's an emotional aspect to, to the guys playing the PGA Tour, or winning majors, getting on the Ryder Cup, and I don't know if they're going to allow that live to have points for the Ryder Cup or President's Cup. And it, It's going to be great, I think, theater to watch this thing play out from a golf fan perspective. But I, I think that one of their biggest challenges is guys are playing for money. They're not going to be playing as much for passion as they would over here. What is the Sharks deal, I mean, Y'all, I mean, y'all think to push this like, I mean, the tour was pretty good to him. Yeah, I just think he's got a bone to pick with the PJ Tour after he can't. Sour, it sounds like. I mean, I, Greg Junior is actually a friend of mine, and uh, I mean, I, you know, Greg Norman is one of my favorite players when I was a kid. I mean, when he almost won that British, that was awesome. Um, but mm-hmm. you know, I lived in Jupiter for seven years, and um, you know. Uh, uh, the thing at Medalist uh, didn't go very well, and I don't know. He's just a, a bold dude, and he just 
is that? Is, just, this, is this like a power play or something? I don't know. I mean, I, obviously they gave him a lot of money to, to be the face. So, I mean, it's kind of hard to, I mean, again, you know, like he just wants to take care of the family. I don't know. Get, get, get mom some new shoes. I don't know. I, I, hey, I, I think when he came up with that idea of the World Golf Tour, what, 20 years ago or yeah, longer? It, yeah, WGC events. And then the tour, Fincham and, and the whole group said, no, we're not going to do that. And then, then they took his idea and ran with it. I think that really pissed him off. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think, he, yeah, he's been looking for a reason to get back at them. Again, I don't know, I Greg. Agree. I don't know they've anyone that knows pieces. him. To, they suck. Here's, here's Slate Jr. running around. You see him. <laughs> 520 pounds on him. Um, there's something up, man, because it's too much conflict with it. And Nicholson, exactly, whose side is he on in this deal? Sounds like he's going to be over there. I, I have to I, it out. sounds like it sounds like he might be on Phil's side. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Phil, like... I just um, finished his book, by the way. Did you guys read that at all? Did you see it? I have, and I've, I've seen a lot of comments about it. It's getting a lot of... Getting a lot of uh, interest alan shipnook's part of that fire pit collective group and i've been you know i'm involved with them so uh i definitely want to read it i mean it sounds like the reception's been pretty good whereas at first it was kind of kind of intense you know like unauthorized um biography but um but yeah i that's a that's a big deal um well i mean he, he does a fair job at portraying mickelson to have his issues we'll we'll call him that yeah. uh it, but then he does portray, he, he does give a lot of examples of Phil being extremely generous. Oh, for sure. And I'm not going to spoil it for anybody, but I mean, I, I've heard from the guys at Harbortown that I know that work there. I mean, any time he was in there, uh, I think he would give at least five or $10,000 to the guys at the end of the week, depending on where he finished. But that, that, that's a hell of a chunk of change for those guys who are used well, to making, yeah, I mean, I, you know, back in the day, 10 bucks an hour. He was my grandmother's favorite player, you know? Um, uh, may she rest in peace. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, you know he's he was the nice guy. Um, so now it's just such a weird thing for him to have been. Uh, I mean, it, when he won the PGA last year, I mean his popularity couldn't have been higher. And uh, mm -mm. now it's just so bizarre that you know golf's number two is in the in this in this odd place, and he couldn't defend his thing. You know, couldn't win his championship. So I don't know. I love Phil no matter what. I, I just you, you got to respect the guy. <laughs> Could, could you imagine at the at hey? Could you imagine at after the PGA last year? Let's say the week after, someone walked up to you and said, "This time next year, Phil's no one's going to even know where Phil is, and Tiger's going to be playing in the PGA." You'd look at him and say, "You got to be out of your mind." I had house, car, everything. So, yeah. Yeah. Tiger. Uh, I mean, just this fact that he's made both the cuts is so impressive. Um, but yeah, the fact that Phil is not even present for. Uh, for these events, it's just shocking. I mean, to win a major at the, you know, to set the record at the oldest yeah, age is so cool. And, well, and, and that reception up 18, it was just such a big moment in golf. And then now we're like, we don't get to watch these super flops. You know, it sucks. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. I was expecting to be down here. You know, they just had the major here in Birmingham, right 30 minutes from where we're at right now. Uh, I was a little disappointed. My boy wasn't there, Freddie, of course, but. Uh, Mickelson, was he not, could he not play it? Had they shut him out then? No, I mean, I think he, who well, knows? Who knows? It. That's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if I would have thought if he could have played, why would he have skipped a major? And he'd have loved this golf course. He would have ripped it up. He would have won. Um, I believe that. I mean, Steve Stricker played pretty darn good. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I, uh, you know, Phil, uh, the Callaway thing's crazy because that was a lifetime deal he signed in 2017, and then they discontinued it. It's just wild, you know. The face of the brand's gone, and the whole thing, and we we don't get to watch Phil. So selfishly, uh, I just hope everything pans out. It's already. not just you, man. I mean, yeah, I they yeah. You, like you, you just hate to see a, a, a whole career tarnished by something like this, and I, I just hope for his sake, w w whether someone out there doesn't like, what, what maybe they weren't a fan or they are a fan. Either way, I think. People in the golf world and in this country just like to see somebody come back and not have to suffer so much. I mean, he's going to pay his price, right? He's going to have to deal with it. He he made his bed. But I think everyone would agree that they'd like to see him come back in some way, shape, or form. He just meant too much for golf in the last 30 years. I agree. Yeah. It's just like the Sharks got something, though, like some kind of vendetta, man, that uh, I don't know. It It is it curious how this thing is going to pay out with us. 
because again, that's a lot of cash and, and money sure makes the world go around whether you like it or not. Yeah, I mean, it, mm -hmm. my agent asked me if I wanted, he's like, if you have a chance to play in London on June 2nd, which is my birthday, um, he was like, he's like, would you go over there? I was like, I mean, yeah, yeah, I would. S sign me up. That'd get me a house in Pell City, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I mean, you get me a damn nice one, too. <laughs> That's the thing, man. It'd be it, it's a life changer for some guys, you know, without a doubt. It, it, they they did it the right way, I would think, as far as encouraging people to come over to their side. And those pockets are plenty deep. I'm very interested, like a kid waiting for Christmas, to see who's going to come out and play on that tour. Sergio's going to. Yeah, there was a couple yeah. that have already had face committed, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think. Uh, do I really know? No. But it sounds like Sergio is pretty disgruntled and ready to go. The only ones who I've heard for sure from the U.S., or at least that had applied for a release, was Robert Garrigus and yeah. obviously Phil. I haven't heard anybody else well, outside changing. of this room. Even though he's made a bunch of money on tour, I mean, that's that that money thing, you'll get past whoever your feelings you hurt for yeah. a good bit of cheese. Yeah, like the guys from overseas, it just seems like, I mean, obviously we're talking about Garrigus, so that doesn't really apply, but... The guys that I know, I mean, they're just trying to get the money home to wife and kids, you know? I mean, it's like, can you really fault them? You know, they're just trying to take care of the family. And if they get an opportunity like that, I mean, that's just hard to say no to, I think. Who was the guy, the Australian dude, the Mickelson's, that fired at him the other day? I read that article, and I can't, even, I can't remember what to do now at my age, one day or another. Bones, his caddy? No, it was uh, not Mickelson. I apologize, the shark. The guy from Australia that that's about his age, uh, he ripped him up pretty good about... He, oh, uh, he Wayne... Uh, Wayne Grady? Yep. Wayne Grady, yeah. Wayne Grady. Yep. He yeah, he really tore into him. Was like. I mean, he didn't let up on that deal at all. Mm-mm. But damn, that money thing. He's The shark is the man down there, but, you know, I mean, he's lived in America in a long time, and uh, he's a Jupiter guy, so I don't know. Maybe... Maybe down in Australia. I mean, Adam Scott's the darling, so. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about what you guys got going on. Will, you're making a great comeback. You won a couple of weeks ago on a, on one of the satellite tours. You got through local of uh, U.S. Open qualifying. And, Jeff, you've been telling me all about Will's comeback and how much you think of him. So what's uh, what's uh what are you guys working on now? And, and tell me about what's, what you got going on. Oh, I mean, I'm just grinding. Uh, I got great coach and Jamie Lett down the road. Uh, this guy's ridiculous. Um, he played basketball, D1 basketball at Troy. Um, averaged 30 points his junior and senior year. This guy's an athlete, and he's got a great eye for the golf swing. And uh, Jamie's helped me. Um, yesterday, I hit 120 um, with my swing speed, and I've never hit that in mm -hmm. my life. Uh, so, um, yeah, just, just kind of really excited about uh, – 120 miles an hour um and uh have you been have you been training for that specifically in any particular way i mean i'm in the gym i was in the gym this morning i'd work out every other day or if not uh what I'm, I'm trying to do three to five a week um and i've been doing that for uh you know since i got my head straight and uh so my speed and the lack of uh poison in my body is is allowed my talent to resurface um so, you know, that's good. Uh, There's plenty of that. Cra cra crazy shit like that happens when you start. Uh, it's crazy, man. I, I'm, I'm blown away. I, I've, I'm hitting shots, you know, like that the shots that you got to hit. Like, you know, if I got 193 or whatever, now I can take a seven iron and throw it to the moon, you know, whereas before I'd have to finagle a six in there and hope I didn't heal it um, mm -hmm. or a five even. And, and now my wedge is carrying 150. And, and so that means I can get to pins. You know, pens are more accessible. And, um, but yeah, uh, I got the Corn Ferry event coming up. I qualified for that in San Diego uh, two weeks ago tomorrow. And uh, so, yeah, I'm just excited to try this BMW out. Well, this golf course he's going to for second stage yeah. of, uh, so been there. Of, uh, of, Q, I mean, of US Open. I played it, I, I made it through there and got to play it. It was a little too much for me. It should be fine for Willie. Um, ways playing plus he can handle that golf course uh and it's tough so it's going to separate a lot of them i mean it, it, it's actually you know and they set it up much they can for u.s open kind of deals so it's going to separate a lot of people that 
the you probably ain't playing against five, maybe ten people at the most out of everybody over there. Mm-hmm. The rest of them has no chance. Yeah, it's a small, you know, there's only going to be two or three spots. I remember Russell Henley getting through there a few years ago, and, um, you know, it's it'll be like a 60 for two or something, I mean, maybe less, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the only problem with getting through the U.S. Open is you got to play in the U.S. Open. Um, you know, but <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you think if you think sectional is hard, then go to regional. If you think regional is hard, get to the big one. Yeah, I played it in eleven, and uh, it didn't do one good thing for my confidence. <laughs> um, but but it was still really cool. I mean, you know, being there, I, you know, next thing I'm hitting balls next to Ernie Elk. And I remember this sports writer walked up to me and said, "Are you going to play in the U.S. Open holding the club like that?" And I was like twenty three, and I'm just like, I don't even know who this guy was, but I just remember it hitting. I was like. Oh my God, is my grip suck? You know, I was like, I, I've never even looked at my grip. I don't know what my grip looks like. It's a weak left hand and a strong right hand. It's and two trigger fingers, so it's all kinds of messed up. But, but I just remember that. Anyways, it's just, uh, yeah, it was. Um, I wasn't prepared in 2011. If I were to somehow get in this year, that you know, mentally probably. Be a lot of there's been a lot of water in the bridge since yeah. then, man. Yeah, the first U.S. Open. Yeah, I mean, can only imagine. It know? was intense. Right after after what what you gone through and and made changes to and made yourself better i mean you know you don't come out of that without a new sense of strength or self-confidence and yeah you start telling yourself this is what i'm going to do and then you actually do it and you start feeling better that that is really some powerful shit there it's been pretty wild i mean it's the reception of the very um you know gritty article has been fine i mean you know overwhelmingly positive there's some negativity in there but whatever i mean i don't care it's my life um I figured I'd tell it, and, um, you know, there's, the book's going to come out next year, and, you know, it's just kind of taking the uh, momentum and, I, you know, uh, kind of all in on it. Uh, it's some accountability. Uh, it, you know, as long as well, I... Man, for what it's worth, yeah. there ain't nobody more proud of it than I am. I mean, it takes a lot of damn balls to step up and get this over with. It was a bold, bold, bold. Oh, Cause, you know, Cause really, you, you've I've known him how long? How long, how long you, uh, champ, how long you know him, Will? Since he was probably about nine. I mean, my mom took over at Pine yeah, Harbor in 91. I, he chased me around back in the day. Uh, when? I mean, mom came in 91. I mean, you'd have been oh, Pine yeah, Harbor yeah. I, I was, I was like five. five. Yeah, so yeah, a, a long time. I used to aggravate the heck out of him. He, uh, he's running around with a golf club in his hand all the time. So uh, a long, long time. 30, 30 plus yeah. years. Hmm. And like my daddy, my granddaddy used to say about me, he's all right when he's asleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, none of us are perfect. And, uh, it, you know, it's just been a uh, – I'm just glad I'm on the other side. Of the- I, I got to do this one, man. The first toe at, at where his mom was a pro at, where, where we played and when Will hung out with everybody, it was a par five. So when Will was like eight, nine, maybe ten or eleven, he hit driver, 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 chip, one putt. And he bitches every now and then about his putting, but he grew up one putting like 16 out of 17 greens every time he went around there. Now, of course, you don't shoot 58 or 59 like he has and win the things he has if you don't putt the ball good. You know, like Boo, they talk about how bad a putter he was. I don't know a cat that's won any tour events that's a bad putter. Maybe there's some out there mm-hmm. I just had never heard of. Yeah. They, they give Zalatoris the same... Uh, that's the truth. Know, and that's, that's a lot of love. I didn't think yeah, about that. Yeah, man. yeah. Zalatoris is like, he's a terrible putter. Look at that thing go inside and then reroute. It's like, yeah, but he just lost in the playoff with the PGA. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, and he can, he's coming second to Masters and second to PGA. It's yeah. like, yeah. And it's, what, it, what what are you measuring him against? Yeah, like, what what are we doing here? <laughs> like, this guy's good. and uh, But, yeah, yeah, putting's a, a fickle one. But uh, I've definitely been more of a ball striker. But, but, but yeah, if, uh, we can get that putting rolling, uh, which it's been pretty good. I just uh, – I'm glad I'm home for two weeks to work on Mm-hmm. All right, so we were talking about you. You said you had a few stories about Will when he was young. Well, uh, whippersnapper. I, and, in, I didn't realize he was scared to death of taking shots, and we was on the range one day hitting balls, getting ready to play in one of our money games, and Will was probably 10-ish or so, 11. Maybe he might I was be. going into sixth grade. So, so there you go, the sixth grader deal. And he comes out there, and, <laughs> and I don't even know how we got to the shot thing, but – it had gotten brought up, and I was like, man, you know, if you don't get that shot or you got to get the shot, I forgot how it was worded. But if you don't, I mean, it's going to be bad. This could be a big deal. When I turn around to hit some balls, I turn back around, Will's gone. Like, he had done sprinted. He bolted. He'd gone down to <laughs> tell his mama. 
Yeah. He was worried about this shot. It was one but a minute. Miss Kim, his mom, which is the coolest lady ever, yeah. she had rode back out on the drive range. It's like, y'all better leave my baby alone. <laughs> you know, it, it, I, he was scared of shots, which I ain't a big fan of those to this day either. But when I had to get immunizations to get into sixth grade, so he actually wasn't lying, but I, but I didn't know that <laughs> no. I was going to find out. <laughs> None of us did. It all come out. It, it couldn't have worked no better because we really didn't know any of it, but there it was all put together. But, man, Pell City, we've had some good times around here. Man, uh, you know, the golf courses, it, it, I don't know how to – Pell City is just Pell City. How many people do you think lives here now? 20,000? Yeah, probably 25, 20. I mean, back in the day, it was 15 when I was a no, kid. No, it's getting bigger now because bigger. of the lake, you know. So, it, 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 t- t- tell me, and, and everybody listening, so where you guys would play, and, and Will, you, you were the young kid, and you got to get to hang around with all, all the older guys and play golf. Was there a – like a, a, a group of players that, that would play or, or hang out together and, oh, yeah. and yeah. do their thing and have tournaments and stuff like that? We had a real good game. They were uh, they were a few that kind of played like I did at that time. Roy Holland. And we had some older ones that had been out there forever, you know. And then, of course, now you talk about legends. Those old cats were truly legends. Reed they Alexander, were to me. yeah. I mean, uh, and, and a, a few of them who helped me, sponsor me when I got out there. But the games were, um, yeah. I mean, if you'll give me a minute, of course, I can't remember nothing. Some of that stuff that went on out there was everybody's got some kind of story back in the day about, you know, somebody. And they were. that We had some hellacious gambling games out there. And some of the people were uh, literally, I guess. Now, granted, all of them's kind of on the back nine, as you know. We talked about that earlier, which hell, everybody's headed that way now. But golf is uh, hot here in the nineties. It was that, and they'd be 30, 40 people show up on Wednesday and Friday. You know, the banks was closed on Wednesday at noon. Everybody met up at mm-hmm. two or one o'clock and got after it. And a lot of them owned banks. Yeah, they supposedly. Square mileage wise, Pell City has the most millionaires around in a big, a big, big circle, and they do. There's a lot of money in Pell City. You never know it when you drive through, but and you would see these people out or at the golf course, and the way they dressed or the car they drove or that kind of thing. You would that that'd be the last thing you would think was they was worth five, six, seven million dollars. But some of the gambling games with those old cats were legendary, you know, up there. Yeah. Um, I was in awe of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When we well, well, got to a certain age, you know, things changed around there. I kind of moved on up to the mini tour days. And, I mean, was you were 16, 15 or 16 when you won the Birmingham Metro? Uh, it 16, was a grown, it was a, yeah, he won it, how many was that, eight or ten? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, he's like six, back, he can't, back, he can't drive down there to get in the tournament. And the Birmingham Metro is a pretty big deal. Oh, since Birmingham being a big city like it is, it was all amateurs, the best amateurs around. So Will goes down there at 16 and wins by like seven or eight, and they don't know, nobody knows who he is, you know. <laughs> and that kind of was the beginning of some ass whoopings he's put on a lot of people around this neck of the woods. Yeah, the Birmingham. So, Will, when, when you're playing as a young kid, even an early teenager, and you're playing with all these legends and guys like Champ who are, who are playing yeah. mini tour and, and going going after the PGA tour, right? And, and so, at, at what point did did you really learn the lesson where, where they didn't treat you as a kid anymore, and they, you know, where you're you're not the youngster, but now you're actually playing with them and, and playing for money, and they're not going to let you off the hook just because you're young. Did well, you remember? I mean, was there I, anything I like wasn't that? Involved in the games too much. I mean, I did in college. We we went down and played the thing at Pine Hill and. You know, I would play in the little Calcuttas and stuff. But, yeah, I didn't really have any money to join in. But people would back me. I mean, I played with Ponytail a lot. Um, um, Mark. Uh, yeah, he's been in Mark Lansing. He's yeah, Mark Lansing. Um, pretty solid game. Yeah, so it was more, it was college, right after college. I Never as a, as a teenager. But, but uh, so, so you had already been seasoned, per se, by the, you know, playing in college. And, you know, you, it's not like you're going to just get pushed over like you're some kid still living at home. Yeah, I probably couldn't have handled that. I was just playing little AJGA. I mean, you know, the AJGAs were big, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I just played kid stuff. And then I went to college and. Uh, once I was over in Atlanta playing at Clayton State, I'd come back in the summer and I, I, we played them for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, what he, was the? It, 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 Will won't say it, but he's won at every level he's ever played in, uh, uh, up 
uh, other than the tour. And this will be this will be a good one. Next time we do an interview, after he wins a tour event, when he's back out there, it should be pretty cool because uh, that actually will put a little icing on the cake. This thing in South Carolina will be it's gonna be crazy. I mean, you know, it's gonna be on the Golf Channel, obviously, and uh, it's the BMW Charity Pro Am. Um, Mm -hmm. that's good yeah, that, that's one of the bit. That's one of the bigger ones out there. It's been around a long time. Everybody's, everybody's it's there. amazing. Yeah, I, I had it for Ben Bates up there, and it was a crazy time. It's, it's a, a wild week. Time. It's a wild week. I mean, Canelo Alvarez will be there. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. Everybody, man. Yeah, it's a badass deal. I mean, um, David Putty. I hope I hope Putty's there. Uh, uh, Patrick Warburg. Um, I'm a big Seinfeld guy. Um, but yeah, they're giving me a Beamer for the week. You know, we got a big house rented. But there's gonna be a lot of coverage. There you go. Me. It's gonna be pretty intense, but. I mean, whatever. It's just it's just one golf tournament. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not putting any pressure on myself. I, it, it would be nice to play well, but uh, but are they still playing at a th thorn blade? Yeah, they... yeah. And then we're playing Carolina Country Club, I believe, is the other one, which I've never played that one. We normally go up to the cliffs, heading up to Asheville, but uh, yeah, there's two up. Right. What is the cliffs and what's that one? Um, I can't even remember. We played them both. Uh, uh the the uh, lake. Long time I I get. I, when I worked for Ben for a little while, we that was a, it was such a good I, I had a, and everything went on the lips up there. It was crazy. Free food all week downtown and sick. Yeah. Damn. I, I had a buddy that, that qualified for that as a club pro. And, I mean, this is going back because he's older than I am. Jeff, he's about your age. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you. So th this Thank is good. <laughs> right. You're looking good for 57. I hear you. Um, but he, he, he uh, this is probably at least 20 years ago. So, so he qualifies, and I think he gets paired with, in his his celebrity in his group was Catherine Bell, who was in JAG. You remember that show, JAG? Yeah, yeah man. The, the, the Navy, and, and she was a really pretty uh, girl, and she, and she had been a model, and she was like 5'9 or 5'10, beautiful body, beautiful girl. And and Mark ends up shooting like 80, 81. I said, how the hell did you go up there and shoot 80? He said, man, I had to look at her the whole time. He said, you think I could pay attention to my golf game when you got to look at something that good looking? I got paired with Debbie Dunning one year. and She was the tool time girl no, uh -huh. from Home Seriously. Improvement. I mean, she, you know, she's whatever. She's in her 50s now. But, uh, but yeah, easy. yeah, 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 easy on that 50. Um, but, yeah, anyway, <laughs> uh, I and my girlfriend at the time, this is years ago, um, and so I made a birdie. I shot like eight under one day with her. She comes over and starts massaging my shoulders. Um, and uh, uh -oh. my girlfriend just about ran out on the green. And uh, so, yeah, that was a funny story from the BMW. Um, but, yeah. Play with yeah. Debbie Dunning. Yeah. When is that? June 9th. Ew, when's the, when's the Champ, you, you going to caddy for him? What's that? You gonna be up there, you caddy? You, you putting on your bit? You putting on the bib again? You gonna be looping? I I I better can't get to the mailbox and back. I've got to lose some weight. I am planning on doing that. I played this past weekend in Biloxi, and a member guest at Fallen Oaks, and that that golf course is no joke when you're playing good. And I got me a sample of it, um, and either the wind was blowing really really hard, the tee, I, it it, it couldn't have been me, but it was something else. Yeah. But I felt like I had been beat with a damn stick when I got done that thing. The, I'm, I'm a 10 handicap that needs to be on the, the senior tees. And then I can get <laughs> down there around 78 and 80. That's my new story. I, I, I hear you. You, you, you. you remember Todd Berenger, don't you, from yes, back in sir. 2000? All right. T Todd was in town this weekend. He, he's running a couple golf it's courses in Las Cruces. Yeah, he was here in Hilton Head in and he had a bunch of members where he's he's running some courses and so he called me up and says hey we're one short we're going you want to play harbor town with us this was last wednesday so he's i said yeah i'd love to play so i go down there and play with these guys and i i'm just getting back to playing and he says well we're going one foot in the, in the coffin and and will you you played there but i don't know if you played in a few years but they've added some serious yardage it's to that golf enough, course and, I and, it 20 years ago Really? And and they they're they're backing it up. They're putting new tees in when we were there last week that are another twenty five yards back of where they were this the year. Most unfair place on the planet. You can't hit it down the middle because you tree hook. Yeah. Right. I hit it down the left center on. Yeah, thirteen. I'm in the left center of the fairway. I got no shot. I'm 130 yards. Got no shot to the. Yeah. Game. Is that the one with the crazy green? What's the hard par three on the back nine? Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, so thirteen's a dog hook left. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a golf. With, with that. With. That that like horseshoe bunker in front of it. Yeah, it's yeah. seventeen on a par three. Seventeen's a par three. Seventeen's a par three. Real bear. 
See, that's what worked in the t- favor. Of course, and nobody really took him to realize that how good Boo. You can just point him. I, I'd love to have his and teeth, man, his and his uh, teacher. Because all you had to do was just point them which way you wanted to hit it, and they would have done it. And that course, <laughs> like a that pointer dog. Was perfect for Boo. I mean, uh, you had to hit it dead straight where you was aiming, and not necessarily down the middle. And I think that's why two of his wins was, was there, because uh, it separates men from the men from the boys on actually how straight mm-hmm. you hit it. I only played it one time. I, I finished like 30 third, I believe, and uh, man, it was a great time. We went to that little square where there's a couple bars right there after. It was uh, it was a crazy time. That, people come out for that event. The weather was good, so, you know, it was, it was a good viewing. Yeah, I mean, it's a week after the Masters every year, so it, it's a perfect time yeah. slot. Yeah, we hit the Monday after the Masters Pro-Am up in, um, in uh, Myrtle. Is that the Ho- Hootie event? Yeah, I played it this year, too, actually, um, which was cool. They didn't allow fans, which sucked, because uh, there's only about 10,000 people there. But um, so I hopped in the car with Harold Barner. He had a Cadillac at the time, and we cruised down to Hilton Head. I stayed now to Steve Marino, Spencer Levine. There was, I think, there was twelve of us in this house, and uh, Steve always had to make sure that the uh, the bathrooms had heated floors. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Heated floors. in April in Hilton Head. Yeah. Oh, and the pool had to be heated too. So that was an extra couple hundred for the week. And, he, and uh, if we ever missed the cut, Steve was like, you want to go back to Jupiter? I was like, yeah. And uh, he's like, just give me a thousand bucks and I'll get a net jet for us. <laughs> hey, the life That's one hell of a way to fly, ain't it? it was, no kidding. It was crazy. Yeah, I got. I was very fortunate. Kind of like us on the DP tour. Yeah. Yeah, driving in old pickup trucks and beat up cars. 18 and, of us in a, 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 tar, a Ford Taurus yeah. trying to get to well, yeah. Hanging out with Steve yeah. trip. What uh, what was those hotels called back then? J- Jameson, Jameson Inn. Inn. The Jameson Inn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, uh, we got that discount. I'm not sure what the hell it was, but they kept telling us we got one. Yeah. Those were for good how, times, though. How has, Willie, how has, after what you've gone through, and it's well documented, if anyone doesn't know, I'm, if it's okay, we'll talk about it a little later in the show, but how has per- your perspective changed as you bring up flying on jets just from hilton head down to palm beach and after you go through what you did and now coming back it is your priorities and perspective has changed but how so i would yeah, have I to mean, imagine you know when i'm in my 20s and early 30s i just didn't realize how good i had it um you know you i mean i'm not that i'm you know people are like oh your plans to get back to the pj tour right it's like chill out um you know it's like I just play some <laughs> berries, you know we're good uh um, and I, you know, I'm just not, um, hanging on every shot. Uh, I did struggle. Like I won the thing in San Diego two weeks ago and, uh, then I played like crap for like 10 days and I really handled it pretty good. Uh, whereas before I would have been, I would have been more panic button for sure. Um, but now it, just the fact that I get to play golf for a living and not work, uh, whereas I was, I was given a lot of lessons and working the junior tour and, you know, not that that's like heavy lifting. But um, yeah, you were, you were putting in the time. I was putting in the time, and, and it, you know, uh, you know, money wasn't great. Um, but yeah, now it's uh, just the fact that I get to wake up, I can go to the gym, I can go to the golf course, I can do what I want to do. Um, is is there's a whole different aspect, you know, of uh, you know, just how fortunate I am to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, you you brought up a good point um, that as you got older and that you if you don't play well for a short period of time, you know, now you seem to have the wherewithal to say, well, what's the point of worrying? Because it, it's going to cycle back around. Yeah. Hope, you, know, hope, you, you know, all you can do is hope. And, uh, and I, this coach of mine, I mean, he, uh, it's crazy. Uh, making my little crappy move yesterday, I was swinging 115 and then he told me what to do and I swung it 120. And, uh, so I just, I know it's in there. Tom Lehman quote, uh, if you did it once, you can do it again, is something I've always thought, so, you know, tried to hold on to, um, so, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's a, uh, you know, I know it's in there, and I, and I, but just to get to play golf for a living, you know, it doesn't really get much better. Pretty good gig. It is pretty good gig. Yeah. You know, and I used to think, you know, people used to ask me that all the time when I was playing. They said, that's got to be the best thing in the world, and now back then, being younger, that we were, Jeff, way back when, um, I would say, look, when you're playing well, it, it, it's you're on cloud nine. I mean, 
yeah. It, it doesn't matter what what happens. You know, it's just water off your back. But when you're playing bad, bad and you're... When you're playing bad and you're in there by yourself in that motel room. Yeah, so you're in there by yourself. The walls are closing in. You're usually a thousand miles or more from anybody you know, and it just feels like it's going to all collapse and, and the world's going to explode. But then you get through it, and then you get through that enough times, and next thing you know, it's like, shit, I've been through this four or five times. And, and the common denominator, it comes back, and then it goes. It comes, it's just like, that's life. Yeah. And I think when we're young, it's, it's a roller and we're good. And we, yes, and when you're young, you always want it to be good. And when it ain't, you get really mad, or, and then you, know, you, you just get off on a tangent, which doesn't do you any good. Yeah. You know, it is golf, and it is great when it's great, and people don't really get it. You're not doing the nine to five. Uh, you get paid by how you perform, but the cool thing about it is that you do get paid by how you perform. And I've asked a few people that's made some fun of me over the years. You know, I got access out of golf clubs if you want to try it because this damn show not as easy. As it <laughs> it's work, man. But it's work that you enjoy uh, to me, mm-hmm. and I think he can agree to that. It's uh, I chose that, and and I take my chances on being. With money and sometimes maybe not as much money, but it's something that I look forward to back in the day to get up and go grind it out and find out what what I was made of. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah you got to put yourself out there, don't you? And, it's an individual. Oh, yeah, they're exactly right. He said it the best. you got to put yourself out there. Yeah. yeah. Expose yourself, Just man. throwing yourself into the fire, and, and it's like, you know. Oh, you're humbling as hell. Like, oh, it is. And it's very, very difficult. Um, but, you know, it's a mental battle, and uh, – but it, but the rewards are massive. Um, so if you can just you know stay in it. I mean, I, you know, I turned pro when I was 22, and now I'm about to be 36. So it's like you know, yeah. I mean, it's like you know, it's it's. I've had a good life. I mean, I've done some stupid things, but like you know, I've never had to really have a job. I mean, that's we've both been blessed. A lot of shit we could never have done yeah. with a nine to five job. Exactly. I don't think I'd be too good at it. So uh, I'm terrible at it. Yeah. And so golf. Well, in champ, in champ's first show, we, we talked about some of the the things that that he went through a little bit when he came off of playing the pool circuit and got into golf and how he worked through those challenges. Has he been somewhat of a mentor? I know he's been a mentor to you since you were five years old, playing golf and and hanging out the course. But how else has he helped you through? some of the, the yeah, things that you've been working on. I mean, you know, I, I've always looked up to his game, and I've always, uh, you know, he, he was always in golf week. You know, y'all's scores would get posted in golf week. Um, and I remember looking at him and just being like, man, that's that's crazy. I just won 10000 you know, um, for a mm-hmm. golf ball. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I've always, you know, he's the only person that is from this town that's ever done anything with it. Um, so, yeah, I definitely drew uh, – confidence from it, you know, knowing that just somebody from a little town in Alabama can, you know, make some coin playing, you know, hitting the ball. Did, did, did his life experience with what he went through back years ago, uh, has he been able to give you some guidance? <clears throat> Let me tell you something right yeah. quick. Before we came on, Will and I spent over here shooting the shit for a little while, and our conversation, which is our conversation, uh, going through my deal, his deal, and not just golf, other ways. That part, I think, while he and I, when we don't see each other for a period of time, it always goes back to the same thing. We're hanging out and shooting shit. There's a lot of similarities and a lot of shit we've been through that a lot of people don't know. And uh, it, it's always good when we sit down, or I can sit down, and spill my guts to him, whether he likes it or not. And he, I can tell when he turns his head and rolls his eyes, he, he gets tired of me bullshit. But he's but it's got therapeutic. It's, therapeutic. <laughs> it's therapeutic, you know. But it's true, man. I love the kid to death. Well, I understand some of the stuff he's been through more than people know. And there's nobody more proud of him than I am with what's about to go down. And it's about to go down. Let's see. Will, will that, what, does it help when you got someone close to you like Jeff and – and he, he tells you some of the things that he went through. And because when, when you get in a bad way, you can almost think that, that no one else in the world has ever had to go through something and it could never be so hard for somebody else. Because you don't know, I mean, you see it on the outside, but you know you don't know what they have going on inside. So when you get a chance to, to sit with him and talk, you know, privately, uh, 
as let's say a big brother to you or a mentor, it, 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 does it help out that, Hey, you know, I'm not the only one that, that had some shit happen and you know, he did and look, he's doing good now and he's helped me out and I, I know it's going to get better. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, anybody that's had similar experiences, it's, you know, you got to draw, um, you know, wisdom and, and just, uh, different, you know, I mean, having similar life experiences is just something that will draw people together. So, uh, and the fact that I've known him since I was a kid, um, helps a lot so but yeah yeah it's been uh it's been good to you know uh bounce ideas off and you know just you know one day at a time and just you, you got to know your demons and then stay away from those and Amen. You know, it's been it's been uh, that type of deal you know just mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta identify the problem and then you know total abstinence from that and uh and that's what uh yeah definitely draw some strength from it have you noticed, I mean, we talked about the, the speed increase that, that has come from your your body being healthier and, and, you know, the way probably your brain being healthier and everything being healthier. What what else have you noticed in the changing your game? Um, uh, well, any um, part from, from and, and this <laughs> comeback that you've been on? Yeah, I mean, I just love being there. No He's more. happy. Yeah, I love being at the golf course, uh, whereas I did not before. Um, I was, it, it was like a job before. Now it's, now it's a game. Um, it's mm-hmm. Um, it's fun. Yeah. That's the simplest way to put it, man. It's huge. Now it's fun. It's huge. Like the old days. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it just feels like, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, I'm 10 years younger or something like that. Uh, you know, I'm not as, uh, not bitter, you know, I'm definitely not bitter. Uh, whereas where I was quite bitter before and I don't really watch the tour very much anymore unless Tigers win. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, that's made with Freddie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, when your when your favorite player's gone, but but yeah, I used to watch every tour event, but uh, and I'm and I'm getting back into that. But before, I was just angry because I'm watching these guys that I played with and beat, and and they're out there making millions. But uh, but yeah, yeah. Now now going through what I've gone through, it's it's yeah. I mean, it's a it's a different it's a different sport altogether. At your at your lowest point, did you ever think that you would get to the point you are now, where you're on a come back or you know, I never, the comeback has happened i mean you're, you're already won once it's yeah yeah well <clears throat> i won the thing in san diego too which actually paid more than the first one um but uh but uh if that was there was just eight guys it was like a just a random thing they let me play in but uh but yeah yeah i mean it's been uh my hands don't shake on the button that helps um yeah that's usually a good thing what's that i said that's usually a good thing it helps Man. a lot yeah and i used to could sh- I could shake when I was about 28 and still make putts, but not now. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I uh, yeah, just, you know, just uh, balance. Balance is big. Equilibrium, uh, depth, no depth, depth perception, uh, that's a big one. Um, the ground used to kind of move a little bit. <laughs> uh, so that one, uh, when, when you can't tell how far away the ball is, it's going to be hard to clip it. Champ, what have you noticed in in Will since he's, he's Will, since he was at his lowest Dallas point? It's changed. You know, I'm gonna say this, and you were there, Pete, on those DP uh, tour days. Uh, it ain't nothing I'm tickled about, but I drank my way right off that tour and probably the tour. I mean, that uh, there was a small wind at one time, and I looking back at it, I don't know if I was afraid to try to win or what, or I maybe didn't set my goals high enough. But now that where he, with that saying that to this, I mean, his will. I mean, he's, you know, he, he look. He's always been full of energy. Jim jumping around over damn cars and turning flips and shit. He's been like that since he's a damn kid. He ain't never need no help with the you know get up and go. But I mean, I'm as probably more excited than he is to see how this uh, the the last nine of this thing turns out. I'm looking forward to it, man. Yeah, I've had a big personality change for sure. Not as well. It, 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 do you think that comes with age? Is it the experience that you had to go through? Is it a combination? Both. Yeah, both. And just you know, now I'm not, uh, you know, um, you know, pot, not not putting depressants in my body. So you know, just kind of your personality can come out. It's every day now. It's yeah. solid. Yeah, yeah. That's now, a big thing. Now you can look people in the eye, you know. And, Every day is the same. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your golf is every day the same. It is. You know, the odds of hitting a good shot have gone up massively, and that's really what it's all about. Amen. The – does does having the – your focus on something, meaning 
getting back on tour, winning on tour, or Corn Ferry, whatever it is, having a beacon to 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 look at every day, to to work towards, to walk towards, uh, having a purpose. Let's say, does that help? Where it, maybe if you, when you were younger, did you take that for granted? Oh yeah, yeah. without a doubt. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, you know, I didn't. I just was like, this is just the way it. Everybody, this well, sounds it was too everybody. easy. He was that good. I'm eight to say yeah. but it was too easy. It I, was. It was, and I thought I could. I could still do this, you know, John Daly approach or whatever, and uh, and and I could uh, pull it off. But but you got to. I mean, you know, the, I'm. You know, I know Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth and them. They have fun, but they. You know, it's, it's when they're focused. allowed. Yeah. You know, and if you're not, you know, you can't, if there's nothing to celebrate, there's no reason to be celebrating. And, uh, but not that I'm not, if I miss a cut or whatever, I'm not going to do the same things that I did before. That's for sure. Um, and so, uh, and then if I win, I'm not going to, um, celebrate the way I did before. So, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, it's a completely different, uh, outlook for sure. I mean, it, I feel, I, I, I definitely feel like a different person. You are. You know, I don't know if that ever ended. There was a guy worked here, and uh, the course that uh, Willie McGirtz lives at now is right down the street from me, Berkeley Hall. And I worked there between when I played DP and when I went back and played Tar Heel. I worked there for a couple years because it had the best practice facility I've ever seen. They had 37 acres or 40 acres practice area. That's unreal. And and, and there was a guy there, uh, Bob Franey's his name. He's an old-timer. In fact, um, God, he's got to be pushing 90 now. But I, used, he works five days a week. Is it? He'd ran the range because they had a whole staff to take care of the range in the learning center. And he's kind of a de facto starter, too. And I remember I used to ask him when he'd get irritated. I said, what the hell? I mean, you got enough money. You made a lot of money because he was a golf pro and he got out of that in business and made a ton of money. And I said, what the hell are you working for? And he was about 70 years old then. And, and he told me, he said, because once you get older, you got to have a reason to get out of bed in the morning. Otherwise, you're just going to start drifting and doing stupid shit bed. and just, you know, you got to have a purpose. Yes. And, I mean, right. I, you stay in bed. You watch TV. I you sure. do I, shit. Every you, day I get up and try to just, you know, I kill the day, just crush, crush the day. Yep. Yeah. You do the best you can. And at the end of the day, thank God that you got the chance to do it and you got friends around and Daily. you know, whatever else you, you're yep. grateful for and thankful for. And, and then just next day, Hey, thanks for giving me this one. Let's go. Let's get at it tomorrow. Yeah. Just, just that definitely. is the new attitude. Yeah. It's definitely the new attitude. I mean, just, you know, waking up and uh, having the desire to go to the courses and is, be grateful is, for it. Yeah. You gotta be grateful. I mean, cause you know, there's a lot of people that are Shit. going through hard times and you know, everything's uh, still a little, uh, you know, rugged. yeah, rugged. Yeah. People aren't back to their jobs yet uh, around here. I know they're having trouble. They can always be worse, work. brother. Yeah. So, so the fact that I can play golf and um, maybe inspire people, you know, at the same time, I mean, it's a pretty good little, little, um, little combo. Is that something that that you had to learn when you went through? That did you go through the rehab process, or is that something that you kind of pieced together through your friends and family, like Jeff? Or- yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, I, uh, I, um, well, I mean, the, just the the ten days that I did in Atlanta was, uh, you know, I mean, you, you're sitting in a chair all day, um, and and uh, the treatment was great. Um, it wasn't cheap. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of reflection time. And, you know, it was about a two-week period where I just had to get my life together. And I was able to do that. And um, and then when you come out on the other side, you just are like, I can't believe I just pulled that off. Um, and then to have stayed good uh, to this point, because that was mid-February. And now we're, you know, almost to June. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty, uh, yeah, everything's just, you know, it seems like life's just exciting again. So, I, I tell you, and, and Jeff knows Je- Jeff knows some of the things I went through the last couple of years, and I ain't going to get into it on air. And I don't he, yes. if he told you that that's fine. If he hadn't, he, he'll tell you when we're done. But at, at what I, what I'm bringing up is, as, as you just said, I mean, you you go through some things that you maybe never thought you, that you could have faced and, and handled, but you get put in a position where you don't have a choice except you're going to do something and get through it, or you just it, die. I mean, you know, it's either do or yeah, die. You got to be that, a man. Yes. I mean, you, you just got to step up. And, and it's like what, what I get a kick out of is people say, no, I, I didn't do it today. It just didn't feel right. Well, after you go through something that's life altering, 
it ain't whether it feels right or not. You're, you're just going to say, no, I'm going to go do this. I might not accomplish what I'm going to do, but I'm going to go do this. And it ain't going to be, well, it got to feel right or I can't accomplish it. That's some bullshit. Yeah. And, you know, you, you tell somebody that. And when you get to the other side, you know, you've got that perspective that you face something or you, you're forced to go through something <laughs> like that. Because, as you said, the alternative is unacceptable. It's not, it's not even I mean, an option. It's no way to live. It's no, you know, it's a dead end. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a financial burden. Yeah. I mean, you might get, you know, a it's couple days, a couple man. days of relief, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, the, man, yeah, it, yeah, no. it's a crazy, uh, pull, you know, when you, when you go down that rabbit hole, it's hard to come out. But it's gone in too. It's yeah. I mean, it, there's just no way it's going to turn out good. And that's kind of what I've said the whole time is like, there's no way you can't, you can't, be a man and live your life and do the things that you're supposed to do and, you know, be there for your family and your friends you right if, if you do it. Um, nope. mm-hmm. So you got to get, you got to, you got to get off it and, um, you know, just be, just be uh, smart and uh, do the necessary things. I mean, if you're going to make money playing golf, I mean, the odds are, are so stacked against you. To start yeah. with. Yeah. So you can't, you can't, uh, you know, uh, put yourself in a deeper hole than you already are, you know, that's just, not productive so that's kind of what i realized i was like well i'm there's just no way i'm going to be able to do this if i keep keep this up you got two guys that is, you got two guys that are equally the same and one of them's mentality is on point and one of them's having to go day by day yeah. by you ain't gonna outrun that man. no i mean you might get mm-hmm. him a time or two but that race is going to end sooner or later. Yeah, and it just obviously destroys your body. So, I mean, yeah, and everything else goes with it. Yeah. I can vouch for it. Your talent just what, evaporates. What What was the point that 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 you had the realization of you had to make a change? Was it that uh, you I mean, you weren't achieving what you wanted, or, or were you looking around at your family and friends and saying something ain't right here, and, and I don't like the way that this feels, no, or I got to do feel, something? Please. What yeah, was it? I mean, all my family and friends, like I mean. My buddy Rodney, my mom, you know, everybody, like, there was multiple people that were, like, uh, intervening, so I'd lost a lot of weight, I wasn't eating, you know, I was, uh, you know, very isolated, um, and when you're isolated, you can't really, you know, uh, when you just disappear and just fall off the map, people are like, what the hell's going on, you know, so, yeah, it, mm-hmm. was, it was just the, the pure isolation factor, and, that you know, I wasn't in contact with people, and there was clearly something going wrong, and then when they saw me in person, it was like, okay, you know, we got to do something about this. So, <clears throat> so yeah, we, uh, yeah, I'm just glad I went to Atlanta when I did, and, and now it's a uh, hell of a lot better, that's for sure. That, that's uh, that's some of the best. Hey, when when Champ told me that you were coming back, and I I told him, remember Champ? You I mean we we're texting back and forth, and I said, you tell that kid, he, I'm one of, I'm. One of his biggest fans, right there next to you. That Amen. You go through some shit, man, and, and and you you know how hard it can be, and you don't ever you don't want someone to face something difficult. It, I'm not saying what I went through was the same as your. Mine was different, but when you go but through I something life changing, I told you when it's just you and I talking. The, if there's anybody that's a bigger fan of him and me, I ain't met him yet. Maybe his mom. Now she's pretty tight. Yeah, she's a fan. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's all it's all good now. I'm I'm glad uh, to be to be where I'm at for sure. And, and your mom, she's a she's still a uh, pro, or she retired? Or? Uh, she's working in the biology department at UAB, but she was at uh, the women's head coach for 18 years, and then she was at Pine mm-hmm. Harbor for for 10. And, and a good player in her own. Yeah, she was good. She's a Birmingham uh, Golf Hall of Famer. Um, and uh, but yeah, she I played with her the other day, and uh, she did it really well. So yeah, she's she's still a stick. <laughs> yeah, you have to give her strokes. I mean, yeah, but like, and and normally she hits it low. And the other day I told her a little move, and she started hitting it up in the air. And uh, you know, I mean, she was flying it, probably you know, two hundred rolling out two twenty five, two thirty. So I mean, it's pretty good for uh, <laughs> Mama's always gonna win. Now you know that. Yeah, yeah. No, nope, yeah, 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 for sure. She's number one, and uh, amen. And she, she's she's definitely my. Uh, I couldn't make it without yeah, mom. Yeah, I'm going to dinner. I'm to mom's house tonight, so uh, yeah, it'll be. Uh, I haven't seen her. I've been on the road so much, but uh, but yeah, yeah. Mom's been. She's been a huge, huge source of uh, of inspiration. And you know. now, I I read. I think an art. It was a Golf Digest had the article on you not long, online. But you used to go to work with your mom. Kind of how you got into golf. Is that yeah? Right? yeah mom's is, a teacher. Is, I... So yeah, she she definitely. I mean, she gave me the right set up and, and get pointed me in the right direction a lot. And, uh, and she was, she's a great putter. 
Um, so, uh, yeah. Why do women put better in guys, man? I don't know. Probably just less aggression. Yeah, less aggressive. I, guess. I don't know. Um, yeah, she, she's she's awesome. I mean, she's she's never given up on me, which I, you know that's huge. That's your mama, man. Yeah. Do, do you think that that, that that with her being your mom and obviously having a very keen interest in your game, and then taking you to, with her to the course and getting you started, and as you said, pointing you right direction? Do you think being out there and having a so-called figure it out while you're you playing you, you kind of self-taught that way did you uh, that, that I, yeah. lay your foundation i definitely i mean by the time i got to the tour uh you know i, I didn't want to burden her with trying to fix a tour player um but uh if, if that answers your question uh, yeah but yeah yeah i mean I, I i've always been pretty pretty self-taught i mean but but mom she she can she can point out stuff but she she's such a sweet lady that it's you know i never wanted to to put anything too heavy on her, you know, when I was playing for a lot of money. Um, cause that was, I could just tell the look on her face. She was like, this is over my pay grade, you know? Um, but, uh, but yeah, mom. Well, I, mean, I, I guess what I'm getting at, I mean, I remember watching you when you were playing, uh, what was, what was that tournament? Was it in Bar- Mississippi or Alabama? I think. It, yeah. I think it was Barbasol. Did, uh, Scott Piercy win that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I and, and you, you were up there, Close to the lead yeah, for a long time. I think you hit, yeah. yeah. Yes, I, mean, I think uh, you hit it in the water 16, on one of the holes. So uh, he won. Yes, one by a couple, but it was solo but, second. So, but he made that. Yeah, but I, in on eighteen. Yeah, what was that? Yeah, that was a sixty footer. Sixty footer. But, but I, I remember watching that and 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 and, and thinking that, that I mean you, you had you were your your mindset your and the foundation if I can put it that way the foundation of your golf game was okay here's where i want to hit it and and i'm going to hit it there it wasn't well here's where i want to hit it now how do i take it back should my do i need to be here at the top i mean there was literally none of that and i'm like this is this kid is a hell of a damn player because he's a game right i mean you weren't out there and and i guess that's where the genesis of my question was i mean your mom gave you a good foundation here's what you got to do to hold it here's how you swing but then have an opportunity to be at the golf course and go to the range and, and hit and play. You you developed how to play on your own. Yeah, yeah. I mean, w- w- and and you own that. It's not like someone showed you and you're right. learning what someone else is showing you. And, and you and you 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 learn it and then you get to the level you did. You might not have won yet on the PJ Tour, but you know we all know you're gonna. And and you own it. You don't have to have someone tell you how to. You're not gonna. They don't have to change that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know I mean? It, for me, it's, it's like it's, it's, it's in your for, DNA. It, it's just it's little things normally. I, I like to think, and you know, I slide a little bit, or you know, whatever. And uh, now I got it. You know, Jamie's been great. Um, but uh, but yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, when you're self-taught, you kind of you'll you'll go down the you know a weird path of messing with different things with your setup and and maybe transition and I trying to lay it off more or whatever but, but yeah I was I mean you know I, I played really good from 2009 to about 16 and then I then I kind of lost it and then at 18 almost got my card but but yeah yeah I mean I, when it's on it's on and I, you know I was number one in ball striking that one year um, and then the next year I was 178th um, so you know golf's just a crazy <laughs> game and so you know I think um, yeah my route was a little tougher but uh but yeah, I mean, it. You know, at least I'd have to pay a coach ten percent. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you mean your what your mom? Hey, you better watch. Your mama might tell you tell you at dinner night. Hey, hey, hey not not hey, not that you're back game. to playing. Here, here's that ten percent yeah. cut. Mom, <clears throat> mom, yeah, I, I uh, made an addition to their house and redid their yard. Um, so mom got she definitely got some. She uh, got her ten percent. Yeah, yeah, mom. <laughs> I, I definitely took care of mom uh, as much as I could. Well, I'm I'm very certain that she's probably happy that that you're back at it and you're healthy again. She's very. And that's excited. worth a hell of a lot more to ten percent to her. Yes, she deserves fifty. Hundred. Get to the end. Everything's gonna work itself out, man. Mm-hmm. What 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 is the process now to to get back to the tour? Or uh, what's your plan to to do so? I, I don't even you, know how that stuff works anymore. It just, I mean, just playing in a corn fairy event's a big deal to me right now. So I'm just kind of. You know, going through it that way. Uh, I just want to. Foundation. Yeah, I mean, because you got the only way you can get to the tour is through the Corn Ferry, um, unless you mm-hmm. Monday in and do something crazy, which I don't really. I don't hit PJ Tour Mondays because um, they're just brutal. But uh, 
but yeah, uh, you know, I just want to, uh, you know, I just short term, you know, I just, I know I got this, these, the sixth and the ninth, and you know, I'll try to play good those weeks, and if I play good one of those, then that'll, that'll, uh, you know, keep the train rolling, and uh, if I don't, uh, you know, I'll go play the Colorado Open or whatever. You know what I mean? That's a big perk. Mm-hmm. They, they still have that tournament. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a hundred k first place. Um, Jeez. And they gave me a spot into that, so you know, it, I'll, I'll be golfing this summer no matter what happens but uh but yeah just to you know just to whether i get on the corn ferry uh for the rest of the year or not i'm i'm not too worried about it everything's pretty gravy right now you know the shit i find that all these people they say set a goal set a five year set a ten year all that shit but then when you have some struggles they all go back to well just do what's in front of you and then see where that takes you it's like hey what happened to 10 year gold now you're telling me to do this it's like why didn't you tell me to do the just what's in front of me before i got in this mess yeah yeah, yeah you, know I mean, what I mean? you gotta you gotta really play like a kid i mean you know i mean like, i just like back in the day you didn't think about you know where uh your takeaway <laughs> angle you know whether you're taking it you know is the club right, inside cool, your man. hands or under your hands or whatever you know mm-hmm. uh you know it was just i like to just uh hit shots and you know if i can work it both ways i feel pretty confident about what i'm doing so last thing that holds a rotten egg yeah <laughs> champ you playing at all i mean what you got going no, on no no I'm, I'm i mean you know i love more than anything but i am at the end um, and and i'm good with it. it it took a while to actually agree to be good with it that day i played in in uh Biloxi this past weekend or that was um i got a lot of, of golf course i couldn't handle and between my health not that you know, I, I'm I'm planning I'm not planning on dying tomorrow, but it's not up to par. We got a few things we got to do. We got some tests to run. We do have a few problems, but regardless of that, golf wise, um, I miss the shit out of it. And the thing is, we, you and I have joked about this. I wish I never had a been good. And when I say that, because now it it really really sucks not being able to pull off. 99% of the shots it used to. I mean, it's, I never thought I'd be that old timer that I used to watch and play and different things. And at 57, I'm that old timer that, uh, but you know what? We got grandkids, we got travel ball, we got a lot of stuff and I'm not going to beat myself up on it because these, hell, these grandkids, I don't know what I'd do without them, but Willie's gone for a second. I'm going to tell you something. Don't be surprised how this thing turns out. Oh, I'm, I, I've old, seen it in his eyes. Well, He's going to win. I, saw, I see it firsthand. And me and Boo's best friends, we room together. Uh, I can name a hundred of them that you and I know. That, uh, Willie ain't no joke. He'll be fine. He, he's man, he struggled with a lot of stuff. But to me, I've never been more proud one more time to stand up take credit for everything he's done, not blame it on the soul inside. He wants to get his life right, and he has. And uh, like I said, man, I, you know, he's been hanging out with me since he was waste time. I love that kid to death. You ain't got to tell him that, but I'm the biggest fan he's got. You know, you know it's what you brought up about going out to play and it, it that I just started playing again after almost – I played very sporadically for about 10 years, back trouble and a whole bunch of other shit, especially the last three. But I'll go out there and I'll, I'll my, my brain will see a sh- or my eyes and brain will see a shot and I'll go to hit it. Yeah. And damn, if it ain't feel like my body runs into a brick wall, but uh-uh. oh. I ain't moving that way. Sorry about that. They're no way. That's you're good. We're hey, just he, talking he, about he'll sit here forever, but I, I've got to do it because I know what's up. Uh, he's got family business, man. He's got to hit the trail and go. He's having dinner with the family. He would never sit here and say anything to you about it. But uh, oh well, shit. Let's do it let, let, let me uh, let, let, let me let me hit. Hey, after he skins some more yeah. ashes up, we get together and three of us hang out. Definitely. You you guys got a few minutes. We'll do some rapid Which fire. Go, oh yeah, yeah. I love this. Yeah. Absolutely. Th- th- this is all right. I, I got some new one. Jeff always going to do good at this one. So Jeff Jeff got this one before, but we we'll, let, let let's say that you play really well. Off to like Tiger Rest the next couple months, and you make the Ryder Cup team. So 
you're, you're going to be first off in the Ryder Cup, and now they're playing that walk-up song the first hole. What, what's your song? Um, uh, I mean, I'd either choose some kind of funky, uh, you gotta like choose it. reggae. Um, you don't get the high fives choose it. You got to choose it. Um, I would go. Actually, I think I'd go with uh, "Little Green Bag" by George Baker, the song that starts <laughs> out uh, "Reservoir Dog." <laughs> I put "Let Me Clear My Throat" yeah. by like DJ, DJ Khaled, or yeah. whatever. Yeah, I, I go with something <laughs> random. I love all the Tarantino. I love these What's next? Uh, if you could sit on a bench for one hour and talk to anybody in history, who would it be? For me, my dad. I made that clear. My granddad, yep. my dad. That, that that's on kid I'd like to hang out with. Tiger Woods. That, that's pretty good choice too. Mm -hmm. Not uh, you a tiger. Hold on, I'm gonna, they gonna yeah. think I'm racist by not saying it, but no. But tiger and my dad. If you could, I'll split time with them. Go yeah. ahead, thirty for thirty. All right. <laughs> it, uh, you you miss a shot on the golf course. What's your go-to word? You gotta be Ooh, fist is this is this uh, is this? <laughs> can we actually say that it? is the one I've been waiting Damn, for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but you you gotta be fisting. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you just look up at the sky. And no, you like, turn around. That? No, because uh, I got this firsthand. This is what you do. You turn around and look at your caddy and you go, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. And then your caddy <laughs> looks back and says, I'm sorry, but I do. I'm, I'm afraid so. <laughs> he knows that what I'm talking about. That, I done gave food to the wrong yard the wrong at that damn St. Jude. And he flags it with a seven iron on number 10. Flies it like from here to that house over there. We'll, Across the damn thing, but how, so champ damn, he he champ damn right added the yardage and says subtracted it. Oh no! And Boo turned around and said, "Oh no, what?" <laughs> and I said, "This <laughs> big one." And he did. Then you could have got that so much up and down with an airplane or a helicopter. One of <laughs> ten is fun. it's awful. He didn't speak to me. All right, number thirteen or fourteen. Uh, Go ahead. Next one. Uh, with, with a new one coming out, I think this year, or next year, uh, best James Bond. Who played the best James Bond? Pierce Brosnan. They had a date, no doubt, man. Yeah, Pierce, I'm going to yeah, go yeah, with Pierce that. Is good. All right. And, and, uh, let's oh, see. Yes, I had saw that dude kissing that dude in England or something. I mean, he was pretty good. But without a doubt, this Pierce Brosnan cat, he's, he's pretty special. Hold on. The greatest one of all time is down by Sean Connery, Connery yeah. man. Yeah, he was the man. I mean, yeah, I, I, I agree. Sean Connery. Most was... people got. I don't know about Go ahead. Uh, let's see. You walk in the casino, what's the first game you're playing? Oh, roulette. I had a nice run last week, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had a jack for me, baby. Yeah. That's the only chance I think I got, and I suck at that. Yeah. All right, a couple more. 100 years in the past or 100 years in the future? Which one would you rather okay, win? Hold on. Give us a minute, because I'm curious about this one. I mean, uh, years ago, hundred years ago, that was, you had to work. That was the Roaring Twenties. I bet that was pretty. Golf. I bet that was pretty fun. Yeah, unless we we're in Scotland. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Roaring Twenties probably were cool. But uh, but I'd have to go with I'd have to go with hundred years in the future. Amen. I mean, if the world's not scorched, I could have bullshitted my way through some of this in the future. Hell yeah, in the future. I can't go right. back there and do that thing. He said, "What did you say? You're only in Scotland?" Yeah, I'm out on that. So. Not enough courses over here. <laughs> yeah, at that time, they were like one. This one might be stupid. Then here but we go. This, then this if you, that's perfect. <laughs> if you could buy stock in any golfer over the next five years, who would Start it be? Over. If you could buy a stock, stock like a like a like stock. stocks, like stocks and money. Yeah, in, in any golfer over the next five years, who who's it going to be? Okay, I'm not, I can't answer that. Go ahead. Pretty easy. I mean, uh, I would go Will's Alatoris. Yeah. Yeah, I think I go with you, Will. Yeah. Oh, is that right? I, yeah, I, yeah. I hope I mean, stocks you, you, on you, the rise. I, what, what, I think, Champ, and I think you're both back on the the S and P, but it's still a great value right now. It's yeah, still yeah, like yeah. a dollar stock. Yeah, and, and I, we think you're going to be up there like he'll Tesla. Be good value right now. He'll be good to my boys. Has one of them couple parts and then has a flashback. Then it'll be. Anyway, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, who's got the best swing in golf? Men, women, who, whoever. 
so good. And, um, I just can't have it. I've been a practical sense forever. So go yeah. ahead. Let's see. Best swing. Uh, <laughs> shoot. Um, what was it? Uh, my favorite's uh, Hogan. Yeah, I saw Hogan's today. I mean, damn, I, that 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 one's pretty good. No, you whoever you want and throughout history, Hogan, best swing. Hogan, yeah, Hogan. And I rest my case. Yeah. All right, last one. Greatest of all time, golfer. Greatest golfer? Yeah, who's the goat for golf? Tiger, yeah, man. Tiger. I mean, Tiger. Nothing toward Jackie. Yeah. I, I mean, he's a go getter. You gotta love Mr. Nicholas, but uh, but yeah, Tiger. I mean, what he did in the modern era is crazy. I know Byron Nelson won eleven straight. I but can make it. That was a different era. If you caught him that, hey. in that ten uh, that ten year stretch, you fuck with a bull, you can get the horns. And I can promise you this. He stuck a lot of horns up, a lot of people's ass yeah. on that down strand mm-hmm. he went through. It was sick. I, I, I'll tell you what what, what what Tiger's doing now, making cuts in majors on with those legs he has. Man, it, to be his age, people don't know it's being old. I mean, just to still high fast, not that, but they don't get it. No matter how good a shape he stays in, Father Time is no joke, man. Yeah. It is what it is. What it is? I mean, his hands are good though, and he's got to no, stand up out of his great. posture. He's Tiger Woods. Yeah, he's got to stand up out of that posture, and that right foot is. But not what he chance. did to him when he was twenty-five to thirty was yeah. was well, twenty. Sick. Oh, that that was from, uh, from, from pro to thirty. Yeah, it was stupid. He, he, yeah, that he was unheard of. Down Murphy's law, he made every ten footer or every putt he had to make to win or tie or go to a playoff for ten years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Man, we drove you crazy yet. Hell no! I Come love catching with up you with you. I mean, you've been you've been off. That that that's the last one. I I, I got to hit this stop, but we, you guys got to run. Will you got to go yeah, see your yeah, mom? Will's got to go see the family. Yeah, man. Go see mom. Don't don't. Thanks for having us. You got it, fellas. Yeah, thanks, Pete.